in example 4.3 uh, we have to de uh, determine nodal displacements rotations global and elemental forces for this beam this beam has two elements and three nodes the third element is a spring element and uh, it is an um, it has two nodes three and four uh, load is applied at, at node 3 which is equal to 50 kN and a support roller support is provided at node 2 so similar procedure will be followed the difference here is that node 1 is fixed that means v1 and phi1 is equal to 0 for node to v2 is equal to 0 but phi2 is not equal to 0 and for node 4 v2 is 0 uh, v4 sorry is 0 the values of e and i and k are given so what we'll have to do we have to do um, to develop stiffness matrix first for element 1 then for element 2 and then for element 3 for element 1 and 2 we'll use the uh, beam equations and for element 3 we'll use the spring equation so in the book uh, we, in, in this expression is shown you the global stiffness matrix this is obtained after adding k1 k2 and k3 after adding three local stiffness matrices we get this global stiffness matrix this is this is a direct step and uh, the author has skipped the initial steps then what uh, we are going to find the global forces this is F matrix this is K matrix and this is displacement matrix so we will apply the boundary conditions we know that node 1 is fixed, node 4 is fixed and at node 2 uh, V2 is also equal to 0. So the remaining displacements that we need to find are phi 2, V3, phi 3 and V4 uh, sorry phi 2, V3, phi 3. So these are the three answers V3, Phi2 and Phi3. This is what we get after the uh, applying boundary conditions. And then we get the global elemental forces global forces these are the global forces these are forces these are the moments after this we need to find elemental forces so this is it now we'll start example 4.4 it is also very much similar to the previous examples this has the figure shown you can see that it has two elements and three nodes so determine the displacement and rotations under the force moment located at the center of the beam shown that means the load is acting at the center node 2 the beam is fixed at each end that means uh, v1 and phi1 is equal to 0 uh, v3 and phi3 are also equal to 0 so we need to find v2 and phi2 
a downward force of 10 kN this is 10 kN and a moment of 20 kN this is uh, m um, load and the, the value of e and i are given so this is a straight way simple problem k1 and uh, this is k2 then we'll add them and apply boundary conditions and find the answers this is quite simple problem then example 4.5 uh, to illustrate the effects of shear deformation along the usual bending deformation we now solve the simple beam shown in figure we will uh, use the beam stiffness matrix given that includes both the bending and shear deformation contributions for deformation in xy plane the beam is simply supported with a concentrated load of 10,000 newton material properties are given E and G and the beam height and uh, width and height are B is equal to 25 mm and H is so this is the cross section of the beam in which B is given as 25 and H is given as 50 millimeter This is the global equation after obtaining the uh, after obtaining this global stiffness matrix for these two elements and this is the displacement matrix and this is the force matrix. We will use in this problem the difference in this problem is that we are using equation 4.1.15 so please note it down this equation note this equation in which the formula is little bit changed for key matrix this is the only difference in this problem and the rest of the work is same now uh, we will discuss um, some about distributed loading previous problems were about concentrated load that means load is acting on a single point now uh, we'll consider distributed load distributed load uh, uh, have examples like beams in the roof uh, in which the beam, uh, beam is loaded along the length the whole length of the beam is loaded with load of the roof so in this case you can see here the beam is uniformly distributed throughout the beam so In this example you can see uh, this is an example of distributed load in which a uniform load W is acting on this beam so we need to find vertical displacement and rotation for the nodal forces so what he has done that if the load is acting downward then the load on its edges will be equal to W L by 2 and uh, this is with the negative sign and W L square by 12 is the moment acting on the edges So, figure A is equivalent to figure B. This is uh, uh, 
transformation between distributed load to concentrated load so figure a to b is transformation from distribution distributed load to concentrated load you might have uh, studied this transformation in mechanics of material uh, if you have not you can search for it on youtube and see how distributed load is converted into concentrated load after getting this uh, transformation we will solve the problem in the similar way that we have used before this is force matrix k matrix and displacement matrix we'll apply boundary conditions and get the answers these are the answers now uh, this is another example example 4.7 uh, this in this example the beam is subjected to concentrated load and uh, is asking for vertical displacement and rotation and nodal forces so in this problem we'll need to find vertical displacement rotation and nodal forces including reactions and uh, assume ei constant throughout the beam this is the figure given in which uh, p load is acting on the middle and uh, if we draw a free body diagram this is the p force acting on the edge p by 2 p by 2 and this is the moment due to this force rest of the problem is straightforward here is an, uh, another example uh, for the cantilever beam subjected to concentrated free end load and uniformly distributed load this is an example of uh, in which um, both concentrated load p and distributed load w both are applied so you can see that uh, w l by 2 is acting on this node and w l by 2 plus p because of this uh, concentrated load it is added in the uh, this free body diagram and uh, this is the moment acting on these two edges so the difference only difference here is the that force at node this node is added uh, concentrated force is added in here you can see here The rest is procedure is same procedure. This is K matrix. This is displacement matrix, and this is force matrix. We solve it after applying boundary conditions.